I actually like this man. I actually think that he was done a raw deal. He was dealt a raw deal with the atrocity that he had to coach, the team bereft of talent for the first three years on the job. But last night was horrible on the part of Brett Brown. As far as I'm concerned, he cost the Sixers this particular game. And if the Sixers were to lose this series and Brian Colangelo decided that he wanted to move in a different direction, I wouldn't blame him. I'm not advocating for it. I like Brett Brown, and he's done a good job coaching this year. But that's how disgusted I was with his performance as a coach last night. You are up 22 in the first half. You are up at about 19 with about 3 minutes and 43 seconds left. And Boston pulls within five at the end of the first half. Why? Not only are they hitting threes, you continue to push the pace. You do not slow the ball down. You do not make any viable substitutions. On top of it all, you call no timeouts. Nor did you call any plays to get the damn ball to Joel Embiid in the post. All you did was jack up three-point shots. The one shot, the field goal that Joel Embiid scored upon, he drove from the right wing, from the right corner outside the three-point line and weaved around to the basket for a dunk. That was it. You don't do anything whatsoever to stop the bleeding. How do you do that? inexcusable. To me, the Boston Celtics won the game at the end of the first half because you allowed them to snatch back momentum that you had you had captured to begin with. And oh, by the way, there's another reason why Brian Colangelo should be looking at Brett Brown with a raised eyebrow. The number three overall pick was Jason Tatum. Excuse me, the Sixers moved up to get the number one pick. Guess what, Max? You draft Markel Fultz. How is this kid not playing? We watched him near the tail end of the season. We saw him put the ball in the hole. We know that he's got game. Apparently, he fixed the shot a little bit. And plus, the number three overall pick is out on the court balling. And the number one overall pick in the same draft who missed the first 68, who missed 68 games, rather, that comes back for the last 10 to 12 games or so is balling, and you don't play him at all. T.J. McConnell played well. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not throwing any shade at him. I'm proud of that little, I'm proud of that little, little player, brother. Yeah. Okay? And ben, and ben Simmons, one point. And listen, he's a superstar. He's LeBron James part two once he gets his jump shot. But you're playing five on four defensively if you're Boston because all you got to do is lay off of Ben Simmons on the perimeter. What a disgraceful performance on his part. He'll be back. He'll recover because he's big time. But my God, was he awful last night. In the end, though, it comes down to Brett Brown. The first half and what you did and didn't do, you didn't play Markel Fultz at all. And, oh, by the way, Max, what kind of effect is that having in the locker room? Those kids love this kid, Markel Fultz. They saw him performing near the tail end of the regular season and to some degree the first couple of games against Miami. How do you justify leaving this kid on the bench yeah. and don't play him at all Markel when Fultz. you can't find offense from people? Come on. Listen.